Hey there, today we're going to be installing M Performance adjustable suspension onto my F80 BMW M3. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while. Uh, I currently have uh, springs on the car, but I want to have more flexibility when it comes to adjusting the car up and down. And uh, I decided to go with M Performance because it's an OEM product and, uh, and I trust OEM the most. Huge thanks to GetBMWParts.com for giving me an awesome deal on this part. So this is everything that we're going to be replacing. Uh, starting from the right, I actually purchased new front uh, strut bearings. I didn't have to do it, but I figured since I'm already taking them off, I might as well get uh, get new ones. Uh, the kit comes with uh, front springs, uh, obviously uh, bump stops. You've got your uh, gaskets there. You've got your uh, adjustment tools. Uh, you've got your rubber uh, seats where the springs are going to sit. Uh, you've got your optional hardware bolt. I highly suggest uh, you get it. Uh, you've got your thread locker and uh, you've got your rear springs. Now rear springs have a very cool design and they also come with their own bump stops but they essentially come with these, some people call it helper springs, uh, but basically this spring will stay compressed and apparently gives you a, a better ride, uh, but who knows. And actually look at that, even though it's an OEM product, it still has some imperfections. So I already jacked up the car, took the wheels off, put it on stands, and I also disconnected the battery because our shocks are electronic and we don't want to throw any error codes. By the way, put a towel on the hinge just in case you close the trunk by mistake. And I've already done this type of work in the past. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this by myself first without the camera just to make sure I don't miss anything. And I'm going to walk you through the other side of how I installed it. The other side actually has one extra step. It's got a leveling sensor, which is actually a, a better thing that I'm, I'm leaving the other side uh, for you guys. We're ready to remove the spring as well as the strut. And uh, here's how you do it. All right, so as we get to the back of the car, you have these two bolts and we're gonna remove this one and this one. It's important that you actually mark this one because this is your camber adjustment. So mark it on both sides and I also marked it at the bottom. But at the end of the day, you're just gonna match these lines so your camber is not gonna be completely off. Before we start on screwing, we have to disconnect this sensor from the strut. And to do it, you see this little tab in the back? You squeeze and pull and it comes out. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to take this line and pull it out and set it aside. And then at the very end, I'm going to try to get it from here. You see there's a little leveling sensor. It's a 10 millimeter bolt that you just have to undo. We're now ready to start on screwing the bolts. So first we're going to remove this one, this is a 21 millimeter, and uh, second we're going to remove the shock one, which is an 18 millimeter bolt. And the kit comes with replacement bolts, so these we will not be reusing. And next we're going to release some pressure from the assembly to get the bolt out as easy as possible. And it comes right out. Now we can drop it, and don't worry, nothing will happen. Okay, the next step is fairly easy. You just lower this control arm down. That releases the spring. At the same time, for the sake of installing a performance suspension, this top spring seat has to come out as well. If you are only doing springs, you can keep it, but since we're doing the whole kit, so this has to come out. So the spring is now fully removed. We are ready to remove the strut, and the strut is held using these three bolts. So we're just gonna go ahead and undo them. And once you loosen them up, you can just remove them by hand. There we go, they're pretty long, so you're gonna be doing a lot of screwing. Next, you're gonna grab the whole strut, and you're gonna gently pull it. And what should happen is, this should separate from here to release the sensor, but in this case, it's not happening. There we go. You see, we just have to help a little bit. See, so this thing opens up, and this exposes a sensor. There's a sensor up top. So what you do is you just pull, you, you squeeze, you squeeze it, and you pull it up, and the sensor will come out. Okay, and it's out. We're gonna set it aside. And now we are ready to remove the strut. And removing the strut should be straightforward. All you have to do is just pull the whole suspension assembly down and take it out. Pull it down and push it out. 
Now as you handle the strut, it's important not to bang this sensor. A lot of people reported uh, sort of banging the sensor and damaging their internals and then getting a suspension error message. So be very, very careful of this sensor. Do not, do not bang it. Next, we're gonna grab the strut. We're gonna pull the bump stop down just a little bit so you can hold the shaft easy there. Then use an 18 millimeter socket to undo the strut bolt. And it's off. And the reason we remove the strut is to remove this bump stop, remove it from this collar. We're not gonna reuse this. Instead, we're gonna use the one that comes with the kit. And the difference is, it's just a bit uh, shorter so your shock can travel slightly longer. And then what you do is you just squeeze it in this plastic tube to get it properly seated. There you go, and it's done. And now we can simply slide it over the strut and be good to go. Now we got the new bump stop in place. It's time to reinstall this top piece. Now keep in mind that it will no longer stay stuck to this but it's gonna stay attached to the strut, so it's just gonna travel with the strut, so it's gonna stay completely up all the time, so no need to worry. And then just simply grab your 18. And screw it back in place. Now keep in mind, I am using new uh, nuts that came with the kit. You could potentially reuse uh, the old ones, but if I have new ones, I might as well use them. slide it back up and we can go ahead and start reinstalling it. Reinstalling it is just a reversal of removal which is sliding it down, putting it back in place, reconnecting the sensor and there's only one way to put the sensor back in so don't worry you will not screw up. Be sure not to pinch the wires, it's, I guess it's easy to pinch these wires so make sure not to pinch them and then start reattaching these bolts. I will post torque specs in the description of this video. Now we're gonna grab the spring and all of its components and this is how it's assembled. You've got the top mount, so this go bolts to the uh, body of the car. Uh, you've got this helper spring, then you've got this washer gasket thing that connects the two springs. It really doesn't matter which way you install it. Uh, there's some writing, so I'm just gonna do it uh, the right side up. Uh, you attach the spring and then at the bottom of the spring we're going to be reusing the rubber spring seat that came off of the, uh, the stock springs. All of that gets installed like this with this nipple, this nipple being close to you. You'll see it once we install it in the car. So first thing we do is we lower, lower the control arm and install the bottom spring making sure it sits in the groove in there. Now that it sits in there, we take this washer, whatever it's called. We'll put it in place here. Then we'll install the spring. And then last, I'm gonna install the top part. And then with my left hand, I'm gonna squeeze it down and then just guide it in place. There we go, and it's in. And in case you're wondering what height did I set, I actually used the tool to insert in place and uh, that's gonna give me the starting height. I wanna make sure the height is uniform on both sides. Uh, I've seen online that this height is actually the height that I'm going after, so hopefully uh, this will not have to change much, but uh, the beauty of these springs is that they're adjustable, you can turn them and, uh, and they can allow you to go up and down. Now that the spring is in, we can start reinstalling everything. Uh, let's double check that the nipple is showing. It is showing. Uh, we're going to put everything back in place. And again, we, we're going to use a jack to lift up the control arm and allow us to guide everything in place as it should be.
you might have to do some wiggling but eventually things will go in place this is the alignment bolt and went in and now we're going to grab a new strut bolt and again put it in place this was actually easier than i thought it's much easier when you have a jack underneath and we can torque everything back to spec Now that everything's tight, we can reconnect the strut sensor. Here's a friendly tip. I had a lot of issues trying to uh, get this plug to connect. For some reason, it wouldn't click. Then I did this. I grabbed the wrench and pried it up until it clicked. And it worked like a charm. So if this gives you problems, you know what to do. The last bit is reinstalling this leveling sensor and we should be good to go. All right, let's take a look at everything. We are all done. Excuse the background noise, but for some reason, every time I work on a car, uh, the neighbors have to do their grass, but whatever. Starting from the strut, we removed the strut, we replaced the bump stop, uh, we installed the springs, uh, we adjusted the height to be uniform on both sides, uh, we torqued all the bolts to spec, uh, we are making sure that the lines line up so the alignment is not completely out of whack. Let me show you the other side. The other side is obviously looking identical. So there's nothing else left to do than to put the wheels back on and uh, start working on the front. To get to the front suspension, we're gonna have to remove all those plastic pieces as well as the carbon fiber brace. And that'll allow us to remove the struts as well as the strut bearings. All right, and I'm back. I kid you not, uh, it's been a couple of hours. Look, I have a new shirt someone else is cutting the grass i just i just can't win uh so you're gonna have to put up with this noise unfortunately i hope that the, the microphone doesn't pick up too much of that uh, of that noise oh this is crazy i think i need to move to uh to a really really remote area because every time i film pretty much every time i film outside stuff like that happens it's crazy anyways here's uh here's the progress so actually, it turns out that uh, we don't have to remove that metal brace because the strut bearings that I was sent are incorrect. So unfortunately, we are unable to use those. Uh, however, I know that uh, I already did this and this one looked uh, pretty, pretty good. So no worries there. This one was replaced on the warranty a couple of uh, thousand miles ago. Uh, so I shouldn't be worried about that one i wanted to have a completely new set but i guess uh, i have to uh, i have to deal with it but this is actually going to make our installation a lot easier all right so this is the driver's side wheel and uh we're going to have to disconnect a couple of items here uh we're going to disconnect this brake wear sensor uh abs line from here and here and again they just simply uh they simply pull away uh there's that leveling sensor that we're gonna have to disconnect it's best if you grab needle nose pliers grab it on this end and it's a 10 millimeter bolt this next is loosening up the strut and uh, this is the bolt this is a 16 millimeter bolt that we're gonna have to remove uh, you're gonna have to grab it on the other side to prevent it from spinning and uh, and loosen it up over here no need to save it because we are going to replace it with a new one that comes with the kit next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a jack under the rotor i have a rubber pad on it uh, jack it up a little bit to release some tension and what this is going to do is this is going to compress the spring and allow us to undo this uh this top knot uh, this is an 18. now to tighten it you need this special tool and i'm going to link it in the description but to loosen it up all you need is just just an impact gun with an 18 uh, socket and it should come right out there you go it's completely out now before we can drop it and completely remove the strut is we have to drop it to the point where the end link sits straight if it sits straight, that means there's no tension on it, and uh, that means we can remove it. Now, this is a tricky one, because if you start undoing it, it's going to start spitting in the middle. So what you have to do is you have to put this on the outside, and I put a T30 Torx on the inside to hold it uh, and prevent it from spinning. Just like that. 
Although if it's easier, sometimes you can also spin this guy and it does the same thing. Comes right out, there's no tension. And now we should be able to simply drop the strut. There we go. Push it as far down as we can and take the strut out. One thing we forgot to do is we forgot to undo this sensor, which is no good. So undoing it, taking a clip, putting it to the side, sliding it down. Look at this, this looks like it's broken, but it's not. We can now take the whole assembly out. We won't be reusing this. And now we're gonna have to separate the strut assembly so it, to make it wider. I don't have a, a separator tool, but I have this big uh, flat screwdriver. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna stick it down in the middle and try to pry it. See, you can see it, you can see it separate. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to put some WD-40 in there. We might have to. And make sure you don't spray any WD-40 on the brakes. We're gonna pry it even more. This whole thing should come out fairly easily. There we go. Perfect. And the strut is out. Now the next step is assembling the strut and there's a very special way of prepping the strut. What you have to do is you have to uh, take the spring seat, you have to remove it, uh, put the M Performance spring seat. And I was worried that I wasn't gonna finish on time, rightfully so. So I got a, an extra set of front struts and I actually did this preparation a couple of days ago. Greetings from the past. Now I'm going to show you how to prep your front struts for the new uh, height adjustable springs. So you've got your strut removed and you see you've got that seat here and that plastic piece uh, here. First thing you do is you remove this plastic piece. Comes right off. Save it because you are going to need it. Next we're going to take the manual for these struts, put it on the floor because it's useless. We're gonna use it so we don't damage the floor. You flip the shock upside down and you want to tap this spring seat kind of around so it falls off. It actually, I forgot. Before you do that, make sure you mark a line where the end link connector is supposed to be. See, so I've got a line here. Uh, and just in case I ever wanna put these back together, I'm also going to outline everything around so just in case i would ever want to put these back together i don't know why i would do that uh but now i uh now i can you flip the shock upside down it's better to grab a bigger hammer uh i use this stanley uh i don't know how many inches the handle is uh, but it gives me a lot more leverage it's off. This is what the strut looks like. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this sticker because, because removing this sticker is going to allow us to slide the collar over a lot easier. But before we do that, it's good to uh, take a photo of it. So here's a photo of mine. Okay, now we're going to take the tool that comes with the M Performance kit. We're going to take some red lube easy there and what i'm going to do with this lube is i'm going to lube the edge here so it slides just a bit easier come on and the idea is now to take your spring seat you take it off put this in a safe place 
and okay and we're gonna mount it so you know the line that we marked uh, the end link uh, connector so you've got to align this line with the new collar just make sure it sits in the middle okay now you're gonna take your tool and you're going to put it in a shock it only goes in one way and the idea behind this tool is the following so the bottom of the strut sits inside so you put it in one way it sits inside it guides only one way and now we've got to push the collar down. See, this is centered along this line. Or maybe, there you go, now it's centered. The idea is to push it all the way so it touches this tool. Now, people can press it, but what we're gonna do is, we since we don't have a press, we're going to use the old spring seat. We're gonna put this over, and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna hammer it the only thing is when we hammer it, we're just going to spin it ever so often to uh, to uh, make sure it's uh, it's pushed in uh, evenly. So check this out. Spin it 180. Spin it 180. And we're done. Woo! So one more time. Step one. Step two, it only goes in one way. Step three. Step four. All right, now that you saw this video, next step is relocating the sensor. <laughs> And just like in the previous one, it's a pretty straightforward plug and play. Sorry, Violet. Tighten it and we're good to go. Before we go any further, uh, this is how you adjust the height. Uh, you have this little Allen bolt uh, that gets tightened uh, once you find the, the right height. Uh, if you want to change the height, you loosen it up, you spin the whole assembly and the spring goes either up or down. The way I measured my starting point is I actually <laughs> grab this piece of uh, metal and I put it down here and that's going to be my starting point. Uh, this gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight threads. I saw someone on the farm who had nine or so, so I think this should be okay for me. Uh, but let's get to the next step. And this is how you assemble it. You put this rubber spring seat. There's a little notch here so you can't install it wrong. Next is you put the spring in and you're going to roll the spring until it's seated on the spring seat. Uh, then you're going to grab this plastic piece, you're going to put it in, uh, you're going to put it in here, we're going to tighten it. Uh, and then the last thing is you have this new bump stop that you're going to slide to the top and this is how you assemble it. By the way, look how wicked this looks. It looks like the car is in a million pieces and like something's really broken, but it's really not, don't worry. All right, we can start putting things together. Now check this out. There's a little notch here uh, that goes right in there. So obviously you cannot miss it. Uh, we're gonna slide it in place. And just like before, we're gonna use my little screwdriver to let it open up and slide in as much as we can. Then, as I mentioned earlier, the kit does come with these new bolts, so we're going to put them in place. But before we put them in place, we're going to make sure that this bracket is attached. So, I'm going to put this in here. Straighten it out. Okay. It's somewhat aligned. We now grab the jack. Align it in there. There's no way you can screw it up as long as this as long as the spring is properly Seated here at the bottom up top. You cannot really misalign it so Check this out and we just jack it up and aim it for the hole Fire in the hole 
perfect. All right, so it's sitting in the hall. Uh, we cannot forget to tighten this Allen bolt. Uh, but let's press it all the way. And now we can get to the top and tighten the top nut. All right, so we're gonna grab a new nut that came with the kit, tighten it by hand as much as we can. I raised it up as much as possible. And now I have to use this breaker bar because I don't have a half inch. See, you hold it with a 10 millimeter and you spin the outside. So you, you continue doing that until it's fully tightened. Okay, the top is fully tightened. Now we can get to the bottom over here. We're gonna put the end link back in place, but again, as you can see, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't align, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it with the jack and see where it aligns. Uh, okay, see? We're gonna tighten it with a new nut. This is tightened, the strut bolt is next. Just make sure the bracket is reattached. You don't wanna uh, tighten the strut and then forget that the bracket is here. So just make sure you put the bracket how it uh, was before. We can now lower the assembly. Perfect. And start reattaching all of these cables. Turn the wheel. My daughter's filming me now. Thank you, Violet. Good angle, no shaking. I am wet, look at this. These are actual sweat drops. It's really hot outside. I've got my inspector here. Yeah, it's brutal, absolutely brutal. And the last thing is to put back this leveling sensor. And just as I mentioned earlier, this is the Allen bolt that should be tightened to make sure uh, this doesn't go loose on us. But for the most part, we appear to be done. Now we have to start putting things back together. Final step is reassembling the engine brace, putting all the plastics back together. And then we're just gonna reassemble the sensors up top. Okay, and the sensors go in only one way. So you've gotta find the way they go. Clip them. And you're all set. And we are done. Everything is nice and tight. All the rubbers are put back together. Everything is torqued to spec. Once again, I'm gonna put all the torque uh, specs in the description of this video. Let's take a final look at the, t at the suspension. Uh, I am gonna leave these rubber pieces because uh, I think these are meant to protect the springs from rubbing against each other. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave it. I saw people uh, leave those things. Uh, but other than that, everything is looking cool. The adjuster is tightened. Uh, this gives me a lot of flexibility to go up and down. Uh, everything is looking clean. Uh, so I think uh, we're gonna be done. One last thing we forgot to do is to put this sticker in here. Here you go. Now everyone will know that we mean business. And on that note, I wanted to thank you very much for watching. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, and as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. I am gonna do a video impression on, uh, on how I feel about the suspension uh, in about a week or two. Uh, right now, I just don't have the time. I'm filthy, I'm sweaty. I need to go take a shower, put this back together, uh, but stay tuned for that. Although I have really high hopes about this. Uh, everyone's raving about the suspension, so uh, there it is. I finally pulled the trigger, and now I can go up and down as I please. <laughs> Thanks again, bye.